Hi everyone, so this is the fifth video for the first lesson from the slightly updated 2023 pack for the differentiation free. The first four videos are fine, they, they follow what's going on, but the fifth video changes slightly with the examples and the layout. So hopefully I've talked through at the end of video four about the fact that you find a point of inflection when d2y by dx squared is zero. Uh, then you check on either side of it. Then if there is a sign change on the d2y by dx squared, that means the point of inflection located there. So this equate this this example here does that. So let's follow through the steps from above. So if I differentiate it twice, And then I know at the point of inflection the d2y by dx squared is zero. So my four e to the two x minus twelve is zero. So if I take the twelve over, divide through by four, take logs. And that gives me that value. Now it says show that it has only one stationary point. I've got one value. So therefore, one stationary, at uh, one point of inflection, not stationary point. One point of inflection. Now it says find the coordinates to fully see thick. So if I put that in my calculator, I think it's now 0.549. I do need to sub back into the original equation, which was e to the 2x. Uh, was it plus? No, it was minus, wasn't it? it minus 6x squared. And if that works, that gives you 1.19. So I've located my points of inflection, but I don't 100% know it is a point of inflection. So let's check on either side. So I could do 0 and 1, uh, but the completed pack uses 0.5 and 0.6, so we'll use that, we'll follow that. So I'm doing d2y by dx squared, and that gives me a minus 1.13. And if I try x is 0 0.6, which is on the other side there, it's 1.28. Now the craziness of AQA says that I have to say that that is less than 0, and that is greater than 0. And then I can say, because there's a sign change, therefore, a point of inflection, is that one? Oh, what was it then? So it was, was it 0 0.549? Isn't it? Mm -hmm. One point one one was it? I can't remember. 1.19. Yeah. So I've got my, that bit done. So I've found the point of inflection and I've checked it. So part B. So it says for part B, um, state the values of x for which it's concave. So I always remember convex looks like e to the x, the gradient is positive. So d2y by dx squared is greater than zero. And if you look, d2y by dx squared, from, from this here, I think like a little x coordinate line. There's my 0.549. So below it, d2y by dx squared is less than zero. And above it, d2y by dx squared is greater than zero. Now there are no other points of inflection along that axis. So if my e to the x looking graph is convex and the gradient is positive, 
So I'm saying that the convex is where d2y by dx squared is greater than zero. Concave is where it's less than zero. So from this, concave must be all this part here, and convex must be all that part there. So it says, state the values of x for which the curve is concave. So it's going to be x belongs to the reals such that x is less than 0 0.549. There. Now, AQA are a funny one because they don't like you just using less than, even though it's concave to the left of the point of reflection and then switches to convex. They want you to put that equals in there. Now, we don't really, I don't I really, really don't like it. To me, it's very, very wrong. But we have to kind of go with what they say. So I think if you look back, like that there, so I've automatically done it as great one, but it's great one I'll equal to. It just messes with my head here. Right, so that's that example done. That should be the end of your first lesson convex and concave. So I'll stop there. Uh, see you later. Mm -hmm.